I believe that if you stay small, you're selfish. Because if you stay small, you make enough money to cover your expenses, your bills, but you're not creating opportunity to hire people. You're not creating opportunity to go public where other people can make money. You look at Jeff Bezos, yeah, he's worth whatever billions of dollars, but he's created so much wealth in not just the economy, but also on the investor level. He's made millionaires time and time and time again because he opened up that opportunity for other people. And if you look at the basis of his business in general, it's a marketplace. He created the opportunity for people to buy and sell online and the infrastructure behind it to support it and amplify that. He is the least selfish per person in the world. And if you think, if I stay small, I'm selfish, I'm greedy. If I go big, I'm not selfish, I'm not greedy. And it's the truth. The bigger you go, the less selfish you are because you're creating more opportunity. Capitalism works in that way. You have to create opportunity for your customers, for your employees, for the public in order for you to be big. The biggest companies in the world are the absolute least selfish because they're on the New York Stock Exchange where anybody can become rich as a part of their company. So I started to realize that. I said, oh, shoot, I'm actually being less greedy, less selfish if I go big. And that's why now I can only think big. Anytime I think small, I feel like a selfish rat. And I'm like, I can't think like that. I have to think big. So if you're in a small uh, business or you're thinking too small, realize that if you want to be a, a public service of good, you have to create massive opportunity for everybody, which means you have to be a billionaire. So it's like, you, in order to be less selfish, you have to be a billionaire. And if you wake and up with- there's them, enough money out there in the world for oh, everyone to become a billionaire. Everybody, everyone. Um, last thing, we'll end on this. Three tips that you have for, for brands to reach out to influencers. Absolutely. So um, we use an app, uh, we use a couple apps. So the one I like a lot, it's an iPhone app called Brand Snob, B-R-A-N-D-S-N-O-B. It, it's essentially Tinder for influencers. You spend as little as 50 bucks um, and you can get people to use your product on there. Everything happens through the app. I really like it. Um, you know, there are, the other thing is when you're reaching out, um, you know, be really upfront. A lot of influencers will no longer take just free product um, in order to post. Um, so be very upfront and say, what are your rates for posting? I want to send you a product. If you like it, I would like you to share with your audience. Um, make sure that you're finding the right match with your audience. So if a girl is just really good looking and she's got a lot of followers, keep in mind. 90% male. 90% male and they're not engaging to buy. They're just engaging because she's hot. So be careful with that. Um, the other thing that I would recommend um, is that you think of, think of when you're investing into um, these influencers, you're getting content in exchange, monkey see, monkey do. So now you've got a hundred different people, men and women with pictures of using your product, videos using your product. We use famebit.com, which is now owned by Google for YouTube influencers. And the last thing I would say is reach out to your customers and ask them to post about your product. Cause those are going to be your best micro influencers are the customers yourselves. And if you're on Shopify, there's an app called user gems and user gems analyzes every customer and it shows you their social network following. So you can reach out and say, Hey, would you be willing to post? I'll give you a gift card. If you end up posting a before and after or anything on your social media, just send it to us. So incentivizing uh, those reviews, if people like your product, your customers are going to be your best advocates um, at the end of the day. Anyway, the only thing I'd add to that is that uh, it's the cheapest photo shoots you could possibly do is by sending out content to people and having them post it in their own scene and, and doing what they're doing or wearing it at a bar or whatever it is, having that picture that you can use on social media is the cheapest photo shoot you could ever do because it will just cost you the product, if anything. It's the best. I mean, it's the best. I look at it all the time. I said, look, I pay 500 to $1,000 just to get a photographer to take a couple photos. And this person is charging me nothing or 50 bucks and they're going to take the time to think of the angles, to edit the photos, to do all of this. It is, it is the biggest arbitrage opportunity for content right now. Yeah, and, and the quickest way to hack trust. Big time. Hey, everyone, thank you so much for watching this video. If you want, check out our most recent video over here. And this one is the one YouTube thinks you'll like. But if you really enjoyed watching, please do me a favor, like and subscribe over here. Thank you so much.